Christmas tree, all right? I mentioned that a little bit ago. Let me get way back to the beginning here. Um, so we're assuming we've come up with a bit of a bearish bias. It's kind of neutral to bearish bias on this one. And one thing about this Christmas tree, it is part of the butterfly family. And in the past, I haven't really loved this strategy, but I'm, I'm liking it more and more, especially now that we don't have to pay commissions on every single leg. We're adding in a couple extra legs to a butterfly in a sense, and that, it's going to give us a lot of different things. We got a skip strike butterfly, we have the butterfly, and now we are going to be looking at this long put Christmas tree, which is part of the butterfly family. It was just a way for us on the floor. Um, when we were arbing back and forth, we knew exactly what somebody was talking about, and we came up with our own names for a lot of these things, like the butterfly and all those other uh, ones. So uh, if you haven't heard of the long put Christmas tree, it's probably because it was more of a floor thing than anywhere else, but it is, again, a part of the butterfly family, and we'll go into that a little bit here as we go along. But let me get a couple of things out of the way. My name's Eric Wilkinson, and yes, you may recognize me from mainstream media as the Wolfman. I actually started trading in college with some money I had earned working at my uh, grandparents' farm during the summers. I got shipped off to there while everybody else was going to summer camp. That was my summer camp, but at least I got to earn some money that way. Uh, and then after uh, all of that and moving up or uh, graduating from college with a finance degree, I moved to Chicago and started working on the floor. I never filled out a resume before that time. And uh, in that time, I've traded everything from stocks, financial futures, commodity futures, currencies, and options on all those products in just about all market conditions. And this is a disclaimer we need to go over. It basically says any opinions, news, research, or analysis should not be constituted as investment advice, but considered general commentary. And please remember to do your own homework and past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, with somebody's making fun of my snafu in the beginning, I think. All right. Anyway, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Wolfman's blog or our parent company at ProTrader Strat. Uh, our Facebook page, we're pumping out a lot of new content there as well. So follow us at ProTrader Strategies so you can get uh, quick access to some of the daily market commentaries and other content we're pushing out there. It'll just be a little bit faster than uh, what you would normally see, maybe even on YouTube. All right, and I mentioned this is the long foot Christmas tree and that it is a twist to the butterfly. So what we're doing here, uh, Mary, do you lost sound? Is anybody else lost sound? <clears throat> um, Anybody else lose sound, just to make sure? Can you hit me up if you can hear me? Okay, Banu can hear. Um, one thing that if you ever lose sound throughout this is sometimes have to log out and log back in from GoToWebinar. Sometimes it gets glitches just like we had at the beginning of this one, right? As I had a glitch and it wouldn't let me, uh, wouldn't let me reset up unless I logged out. So um, make sure you if that ever happens, uh, take advantage of that. All right, so like I mentioned, this is the long put Christmas tree and it is like a skip strike butterfly. But normally with a skip strike butterfly, we, you know, we're selling one here and then we skip a strike, sell two, or buy two and then sell one on the puts, all right? That's normally what we do. Well, with this one, what we're doing is we're selling a synthetic put spread. So we're selling one put and then buying another put out here for that put spread. So this synthetic one is what enables us. We're adding a little bit more risk, like with the skip strike butterfly, you know, we've eliminated all risk to the downside, but transferred some of that risk to the upside. So, you know, if you are really uh, if you're bearish to market neutral, but you're really worried about the downside, then you really want to go with the skip strike butterfly. Know though that you have more risk to the upside with that skip strike butterfly. Well, with this one, we're putting in another short butterfly or another short put spread in there. And what that does is it kind of uh, a normal butterfly might look like this, where you kind of got to just nail that number. Well, with this one, we're gonna be stretching it out just a little bit more and then 
increasing it to that side, okay? And then um, these actually, this should be uh, pretty level for break even. And then on the skip strike butterfly, we do something like this and transfer the risk that way. So those are kind of your risk profiles with these. The only one we're gonna be talking about is this one right here. So um, it gives us a little bit more wiggle room uh, than we would with the butterfly. Uh, with the butterfly though, um, you know, we're uh, changing some of the risk parameters just a little bit. Uh, how do you think they can answer you if they can't hear you? <laughs> I know, that's so true. Uh, sound has been muted on my part. All right, well, um, sorry guys. You're right, well, that is only for uh, future benefit if you guys can possibly hear me. If you can't hear me, um, it's uh we're in trouble and like i mentioned this assumption is neutral to bearish but with this bearishness all right it is only slightly bearish the way we're setting it up we're kind of setting ourselves up to a point where we are looking for a target you guys know with my my butterfly uh when we're setting up for the butterfly right here these and it's a put butterfly these are in the monies this is out of the money, and then these are even further out of the money strikes, okay? With my Christmas tree, they're all basically what we're looking at, and it's gonna kind of look like um, look like this. Uh, this is base, these strikes over here are going to be at the money is what we're looking at, and then out of the money kind of. So we want the market to move down just a little bit, but we don't want it to go, you know, past our break even on the bottom side. And then with the, uh, like I mentioned, with the broken wing, you know, we want the market to go down and we're worried about this downside. This would be kind of like, you know, a, an area where we would have profit uh, with the broken wing. It, you, you have absolutely no downside risk with broken wing butterfly. Um, but it's a little bit harder to nail the number there as well. With this one, we've got a little bit more wiggle room in between all of it, right? I don't want to get you guys too confused, but that's the difference in all the butterflies. And the butterflies um, can be uh, something that doesn't follow all the general rules in a sense. Like, um, you know, with debit spreads we usually want volatility to expand well this one we're kind of offsetting it and it won't really uh hurt us as much it, it can actually help you with volatility contracting but it's neutralized to a point that it's uh relatively negligible all right so i've kind of mentioned this we're basically going to be selling or, or uh, sorry we're doing we're buying one long put spread and then combining it with the two short put spreads right but we have a skip strike on this long one, the very first one. And that's kind of like along those lines of like the broken wing butterfly rules, but we're actually selling uh, one extra out of the money short put spread. So that's the difference. Normally it'd be a one um, long put spread with one out of the money short put spread on the skip strike. This one, uh, we're adding a synthetic, uh, spread in there so we're going to be buying one put at the money or one strike slightly in the money is usually where i like to look at it this is one where we're kind of looking for a slight correction down uh in order to achieve that and then we're selling three puts after that skip strike and buying two out, uh out of money so the skip strike just means if if this is you know one dollar wide here then these up here are two dollars wide all right to the skip strike is what we're talking about and I'm going to break this down a little bit more. This is actually a better example of what I was trying to draw there. You know, with the um, skip strike butterfly, we would probably have something that looked like this and then a little bit further down, all right? And then um, with the regular butterfly, we are looking at something that is going to be a little bit steeper and this the regular butterfly would kind of look like whoops oh i got my pen back 
it's going to kind of look more like that in a sense. So when we sell that one extra put spread in there, that put spread creates, draws it out a little bit more, okay? You're probably going to have a little bit higher profit potential with the butterfly, but you got to nail that number, which is a pretty difficult uh, task, all right? And you're going to be paying a little bit more of a debit in a sense. So um, we're going to try and transfer some of that out. Did you just clarify the difference between the broken wing and the Christmas tree? Yes, this, well, this is the Christmas tree that I have. The red uh, lines is the regular one, but um, the broken wing, the broken wing is gonna look more like where we kind of come up like this, and then some of that risk is transferred to the downside. Okay, I'm gonna, when I pull up the platform, this is for ease of being able to write all this stuff out. When I pull up the platform, we'll be able to look at this a little bit better, but um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of an example of that. All right, so when we're looking at this, the essentials to success are picking the right underlines. I know there's a lot of uh, faces out there that have seen this done before, probably many times at this point, but what we wanna look at is we pull up our trading platform and this is the option montage. So if you ever hear me talking about it as an option montage, this is what we're talking about here. And what we wanna look at is these monthlies that are close to the expiration. Now it's getting a little close to expiration, you know, inside of seven days, most people are gonna be rolling out to here, uh, you know, in 10 days, these are gonna be the, the spot month where everybody trades. But for this rule, we wanna look at the options, you know, 35 days to expiration. So it's kind of a pick them in between this, but what we're looking at here is any stock that is uh, less than $100, and we've got EA Sports here, it's any stock that's less than $100, then we want it to be equal to or less than 10 cents wide, all right? And that's what I'm talking about down here, just out of the money on these out of the money options, which are in the darker area. And as you can see, between the bid and offer on the calls and the bid and offer on the puts, we are inside of that rule being less than 10 cents wide to the bid offer. And this is during open market operations also, you guys. This isn't after the close uh, or on the weekend when you're looking at it, when all of our orders are canceled. This is when all the participants are in there and making markets as we go along, all right? So make sure you're checking this rule during the open market operation. So any stock that's less than $100, we want it to be equal to or less than um, 10 cents wide. And then we can go over and look at something that's over $100 and we can say uh, Johnson & Johnson, for example, it's over $100. What we wanna do here is just move our decimal place three ticks to the left there and we get 13 cents, all right? So again, we look down here, go 13 cents. You can see that fits the rule for the most part. Um, in and around this, you know, if it fits this rule to, to the penny, you know, then we'd say that that's a, a green light. You know, if it's just outside of it, let's say for instance, we were looking at 15 cents wide here, then I would say that that's a yellow light. And if you had something like, you know, 25 cents here, let's just say it's, you know, 10 cents wider than normal. Uh, I would say that that would be pretty much a red light if it was like 25 cents wide here. Okay, and that's for you know moving that decimal. Now, if it was a two hundred dollars stock, and we move the decimal three ticks to the left there, then we would be looking at twenty cents, right? And then I'd say you know tw look at it as thirty cents would be that red light, something like that, you know, ten cents wider than what that normally is. Or I haven't really come up with a necessarily rule on the red light. I would stick to following the rule of you know, move that decimal three ticks to the left and that's what we're good to go at. And, you know, if you look at these stocks over here, they generally speaking will fit that rule. Even, um, we can even look at Honeywell and say it's 17 cents wide and go down here and look at these. You can see, yes, it's fitting that rule easily on Honeywell, all right? And probably even is fitting that rule outside here uh, at 50 days to expiration because there is starting to be a lot more participation out here. And the reason why we want that is because there's a lot of eyeballs. We don't have to give up, especially even on, you know, although we don't have to pay commissions with this strategy, we have a lot of legs to deal with 
And when you have to give up so much edge on all these different legs, that's really going to ultimately eat into your yield, all right? So all of those pennies count, especially if you're a trader for a long time like me, you know? I mean, I'm a miser with my uh, strategies, you know? When I put an order in, if you haven't canceled and replaced that order like three or four times, uh, you probably are giving up some money on the table, all right? Put it in, let it sit for just a second, cancel, replace, never go right to the mid market, even though that's usually where you're gonna get filled, you will find uh, a lot of times you can get filled outside of that. Um, and those pennies will add up over the long run. Um, but you know, I'm not saying wait 10 minutes to enter your strategy, I'm just saying, you know, cancel, replace by the time you go back, see it doesn't get filled and you go to cancel, replace during that time, um, is enough time to just find the best market because there's all kinds of algos out there uh, trading these things and they're going to make better markets for you. All right, so we got we got this rule here. Uh, if it's uh, let me go to the red, yeah. So if it's less than a hundred dollar stock, we're looking at it to be equal to or less than ten cents, right? Or we move the decimal place move the decimal, all right? So we just move the decimal one, two, three, all right? And that works on $1,000 stocks too, you know? You look at Google, it'll fit that rule for something like Google. Um, and you know, they might be a dollar twenty wide or something like that, but when you think about how big that stock is, uh, that is actually a pretty good uh, relationship. All right, and with the right environment, I usually talk about implied volatility with this, but we are going to be able to fit this with just about any implied volatility percent because we are able to offset it for the most part. Now, that being said, when we're looking at these strikes, the ones that are uh, that we're selling two of, and I'm gonna use just Honeywell as an example here, hopefully they don't have earnings coming up anytime soon. So I'm just gonna use Honeywell as an example. It's fitting most of the other rules. <clears throat> and let's just say we thought Honeywell was gonna come down to uh, the 170 area or something like that, all right? So I, you know, saying Honeywell looks a little bit more bearish. It's gonna come down to the 170. Maybe we'll find support here. So that's how, you know, we've come up with some of our um, directional bias, however we've come up with it. To me, it looks like it wants to roll over. I don't care if they've beaten earnings or not at this point. Uh, we've seen some of the other economic data come out and um, prove that the economy probably isn't going to continue making all-time highs every single day. It's going to struggle here and there. Oh, can I move this drawing tool away? Um, uh, is uh, I can move it down a little bit. I guess I can move it. Is that is that good? I move it to there, you guys. Does that help? All right, so let's just say we've come up with that uh, bias. I'll close it out when I'm not using it. So let's go over here. We've decided that uh, we have the right underlying. One of the things I was talking about, and it's gonna be kind of a pick em here. Time is our friend with this strategy because we want it to decay away. Um, the other thing that we also could consider is going a little bit further out, but um, I want, if time is on my friend, I want the least amount of duration. I may very well want to go to this 50. We'll just have to play around with that. Uh, it's kind of a pick them really right here. Uh, let's just look at this one though. So 75s, if I were to buy this one, all right, let's say we're skipping the 70 strike and I'm going to the 65 strike and I'm gonna sell those three times, one, two, three cells, and then I'm only going to go to the, uh, what did I do, 75, so I'm only gonna go to the 65s here. All right, so you can see, oops, I need to buy one more. So you can see here, I, I've done 10 wide on this one, and then only five wide. That's what we call by a skip strike strategy, all right? Now, um, we can play around with a couple other things as well. But what I want you to notice is we've talked about volatility. I see a lot of people have been in here for a while now. 
So if we're looking at the 75s and we add up all these volatility coefficients, right? So we've got 14 on the one by, let me just reduce this down to a one by three there. So one of these is 14, so that's a positive. So we've got one positive 14, and then the 60s uh, are a five volatility. We've got two of those. So we are looking at 24, right? Just adding up the volatilities. We've got 24 there. And on the one I was selling with the 65 strike, we basically go three times, uh, three times eight, and that comes up with, uh, what is that, 16 and then 24. So you can see that the volatility is pretty much uh, useless on this one. For the most part, a lot of times when we sell that volatility, you'll get like two or three extra on the short side, which means that you want the volatility to ultimately contract. With this particular example, we've offset volatility, so we don't care if volatility goes up and down it's going to, at this point, you know, as the market moves and those volatility coefficients adjust, you know, as we start selling off, hopefully, you know, those volatility coefficients are gonna adjust a little bit. And the ones that are, were short three, right? If the market sold off and those 65s came closer to at the money, that volatility is going to be offset a little bit more. And that's where, if we're directionally right, we definitely want that volatility to come out a little bit, right? Because the ones that are closest to uh, the at the monies have the highest volatility coefficient. So we can assume that the directionality being correct, if we were right there at the peak of our analyze tab, um, that's an old example of, I must use this. All right, go away for me. Oh, I killed both of them. Um, if we were to go over and analyze this, stretch it out a little bit so you can see that it, it is offset a little bit yet. Um, the, as the market moves down and we start hitting this 165, right, then our volatility is going to be affecting those at the monies a little bit more. So it will start to adjust and if we are directionally right, that's why we don't want then that volatility to expand on us too much, all right? So uh, you want to be in an environment where you wouldn't have earnings coming up right away, right? And you got directionally right, and all of a sudden volatility started really expanding on you and that could hurt you. So ultimately we do want volatility to go down a little bit, but for the most part, we're offsetting most of that volatility risk with this one. So uh, just know that it will fit with any of them, but we do want our main concern that volatility starts going down, all right? Does that make sense? The butterflies do, yes, butterflies have a lot going on with them, but you know, that's, that's part of the nature of the beast with these and uh, uh, it's a good thing though too. Now, again, Theta decay, we want that theta decay to work for us because we really want our options to expire worthless except for those um, those ones that we were able to uh, collect on. So, or actually we want those to be the ones that really, sorry, I, I misspoke there. We want those to really start decaying and that's going to be the aspect that gives us our max profit on that, all right? because what happens is if we start looking at the analyze tab again, as this market goes down, right? And if we can get these <clears throat> three that we sold with, that's the one we got the most credit for, those expire worthless. Now our 175 puts are gaining in value, all right? And that is where we want to make our money. So if the other ones all expire worthless, and we get to nail that right on the number at the 165 in a penny, probably, that's where we're gonna gain our max profit on that. And that's gonna be because these 175 puts have gained in so much value, all right? It is a defined risk strategy. So 
you know, one thing to note, if we go much further than this, you know, the risk is the debit we paid. The other risk is that somebody is going to uh, put uh, the, um, put those 165s to you, all right? Just know you have all of the other options to put to somebody else um, in that case. So even though your 160s may not be in the money necessarily, uh, you can still offset those 165s with 160 puts. It'll make, um, you don't have to be in the money to put the stock to somebody. Uh, to understand the difference between the broken wing and the Christmas tree, the stripes are the difference. No, it's just that one extra in there. If I go like this and do this right on the first click, there's your broken wing butterfly because we've broken the wing by skipping this strike and done that. Now you'll see, oops, it's, uh, I gotta get rid of that. You'll see the debit just increased there by about 50 cents. So our risk to the upside increases. We have more of a uh, debit that we're gonna lose to the upside, but we've eliminated all downside risk with this broken wing butterfly. Uh, and then we add that one in and you can see we've gotten rid of about 50 cents of risk to the upside but we've um we've got more we've got risk to the downside having said that though uh we have increased our break evens on this uh, on the upside okay you see that how the break evens are changing a little bit and we'll have to talk about the break evens with this one because it is a little bit different because of um, the skip strike and that extra spread in there but the duration like I said we want we want to have time to be on our side so we want this theta decay that I've shown before because we are doing at the monies and those ones if we're directionally right especially we want those shorts to decay as fast as possible now we are right in this area you know there's not a whole lot of time left but we're going to be maybe looking at more a lesser of a move to get there uh, i think i found some examples for that right now the way the markets have been going i i think that uh, i would write like this little correction to happen um, and try and nail these so i might in just this type of environment lean a little bit towards closer to the expiration, kind of in a tweener. Um, you know, if I were to do this next Friday and enter one of these next Friday, I would most likely move out to that basically 35 days, 40 days to expiration cycle. And you can use weeklies, yes. You can use weeklies to try and nail this 35 days to expiration cycle, which is probably the best because you're going to be able to get a little bit wider maybe on your um, legs but um, just make sure those weeklies have a lot of volume and open interest in them so you're not like I said giving up too much edge to get in and too much edge to get out make sure there's eyeballs in there trading uh, to make sure that you're not giving up too much uh, of your yield now picking the right strikes uh, one thing I showed you was we are skipping that strike and I haven't gone through everything with this. So the right strikes here is we want to look at paying no more. You want to pay less than or equal to less than or equal to 25. Whoops. Um, one thing with having, <laughs> give me a second. Let me just erase this. Before I go back to my pen, 25% um, the width, oops, if I can spell width of the skip strike, skip spread, I'm going to say. All right. So, you know, if it's, um, you know, a dollar, if, if our skip strike is a dollar, obviously we want 25 cents, right? Uh, or less than or equal to 25 cents. If it's, um, you know, $4, if it's a $4 spread, then we want to pay 
uh, less than or equal to one dollar. All right, so that kind of idea, pay less than or equal to, and it will generally fit this rule. One of the things is you probably know you set it up wrong if it's not, all right? You know, when you're doing a regular butterfly or something like that, it's not gonna work out that way. So, um, Eric, I lost you on the duration. Uh, the short strikes are shorter and the long strikes are further away. <clears throat> well, the, um, now, what I'm trying to say here is with the duration here, you know, the market's been pretty bullish and most of that's been due to, you know, the economic picture uh, being in an easy money type of environment, okay? So that's what's really driving this market higher, all right? So we just recently got a Fed cut, you know, that is easy money policy. That's why we've been driving the all time highs. Uh, the economy is doing okay. You know, we're going to find out more about that with the ISM numbers, uh, Institute for Supply Management, uh, whether or not we are in recession or not. Global economy is in a recession. So that uh, is something to look at as well. I believe we are going to continue to move higher, uh, but with some corrections. Maybe not all time highs, but I think we're going to get some decent corrections and then some rallies, maybe. Uh, maybe touch those or come close to those highs, some corrections. But, um, you know, we have to, it's more data dependent uh, right now as to what our direction is. So that's why I'm leaning more towards the uh, lesser days to expiration down this way. We're still getting nice volatility contraction, or sorry, uh, nice uh, theta contraction. Out here at 50 days, you know, we're, it's just not nearly what I want to see right now especially with this strategy as a low probability of success, right? Because we talked about with this strategy, you know, we do still have to, we do still have to nail the number right there, which, you know, is X. We have to nail that number to get the max profit on it. Um, we also really need the market to come down there and trade and just touch it to get to my profit target. Uh, which is different than the max profit. I'm not going to ride this into the end of the day and try and nail that number. If I get down there and I get hit, if it hits my X strike, which is my, you know, short three strikes, my short three puts, then that's probably where I'm looking to get out. Um, with this theta decay, I'll be able to reach that much quicker. If it hit right away out here, then um, I might not be able to achieve that uh, profit target right away. If we were, you know, 35 days to expiration is the sweet spot for that. Um, so the duration is short duration for the theta decay. Yes, we want definitely, um, you know, we want inside, we want less than uh, 45 days to expiration is really what I would say, days to expiration. And in that, uh, in that case, uh, I would be saying that would be your uh, green light, right? So when we were doing this, I would say less than 45 days to expiration. I actually, you know what, I would say uh, 35 days to expiration, less than 35 days to expiration is my green light. I would say a yellow light would be somewhere like, you know, uh, 55 days to 45 days, maybe even 50 days right now. I'm just thinking of the environment we're in right now, uh, days to expiration. I know that's getting a little harder. And then I'd say a red light would be, you know, outside of that greater than, greater than 50 plus days. And that's just because of the environment we're in right now, you guys. There's a lot of unknowns. So, um, you know, that might change as, you know, other things in the environment and the economies and stuff like that change. Uh, but for the most part, this will not change for that. Uh, I might give a little wiggle room on the yellows for some of them, uh, but 50 to 45 days to expiration uh, is what I'm talking about. When you guys, when I'm talking about this uh, red light, green lights, just know that, you know, you can, you can fidge a little bit on a couple of these, but if you get too many, 
on these checklists on the success essentials to success just know you probably should pass on it all right you get all of them green lights then you know then that's the star right uh we're good to go but if you get too many of them or if you get like a red light on it then i would kind of uh look to something else on that short strikes where we're more probable well not more but that's we're trying if it comes down and hits our short strikes then we've beaten the probabilities and in that case you know if it comes down and nails my number right here at 165 then you know that you've beaten the probabilities it's it's come down blown down to 165 that would be something i would think as a target we'd have a support there which is kind of why I picked those strikes as well. You know, you, you come down and hit that 165. That means uh, 165, our probabilities of finishing in the money or right there, you know, one penny in the money is a 15% chance of probability. That's what Delta tells us is not only what it does or how it affects our premiums, but it also tells us that you know, our probabilities of this 165 strike finishing one penny in the money is a 15% chance. Well, the floor trader hack, which is what uh, Benu is uh, uh, alle alluding to, is it was a floor trader thing that we came up with was that basically we said that two, I got black on, so uh, two times the delta, which this is delta. Two times delta is your probability of being kissed. All right, which means the market just comes down there and touches it once. So uh, when we're looking at this, you know, the market within the duration is two times the probability. Forgot to fix my marker on that. Um, you know, so there's only a 15% chance of it, of the market right there on that day, finishing one penny in the money, all right? So actually 165, right? There's only a 15% chance of that happening. But in the next 15 days, we could easily see the market go like this, hit and touch my market or touch my strike and then start moving away from it, right? Well, that's not necessarily what I want to see happen here, because then, you know, I might actually look at more of a loss there uh, because it starts rallying back up and away and finishes up here. So 15 percent chance of a probability is not very good to nail that number. But, you know, two times the delta or two times 15 is 30. So I got a 30 percent chance of that happening. So of it coming back down and hitting that. So my chances of it happening are much greater of a touch or a kiss than it actually finishing there and nailing that number. So short strikes were more probability of touching. Yeah, so the short strikes, we have more probability of touching than finishing right there. Okay. So we got a, uh, and we've got the short strikes, right? 15, we want 25% the width of that skip strike. Now, our exit strategy is when we basically meet, uh, we meet 50% of max profit, right? So we need to come up with, uh, with our exit, we're looking at 50, you know, if you have, all right, 50% of max profit, and this is, I, I see a lot of you guys are here. If you guys have ever traded a butterfly, you know they can be very frustrating, all right? And if you don't love butterflies, but you wanna try this out a couple of times, you know, I would say basically 25% um, of max, all right? Let's say that's the, the green light, you know, you definitely go for that. Just know that the 50% uh, of max profit on this one, you know, you're looking at a yellow light. It's just a little less probable of getting that. You're going to have to have the market go down there and maybe hit your strike, sit there for a day or two um, before moving up and away. So uh, if you have a higher risk tolerance, you know, then go for this one. If you have a lower risk tolerance and 
uh, are just have done a couple of butterflies and weren't real thrilled with results, then I would look at 25% of max profit on that. All right. So what is max profit? What's max profit on this? It's the width of the long put spreads minus that debit paid. All right. So the width of the long put spread minus the debit paid. And we're looking at paying 25% of that. So, um, you know, your other three quarters is your max profit. Now, you're going to take that three quarters. So, for instance, with this one, um, we're going to be looking at, let me try and find my thing here. So we can look at, probably easily look at our uh, platform here where we have this strategy still up. I have it set up right. So let's look at the Analyze tab to see this a little bit easier. Still on Analyze. Let me get rid of one of them so we can see it a little bit better. So we have the um, $10 wide, and that's the one we're looking at. It's the skip strike one. $10 wide minus $2.69. You can see that we're looking at somewhere up at, this is going to be seven, um, seven hundred dollars and thirty cents. So seven thirty is our max profit. Seven dollars and thirty cents because it's the two sixty nine minus the width of the skip strike spread. All right. So it's seven thirty. So basically, we're looking at taking fifty percent of this max profit. So let's say it's three dollars and sixty five cents. All right, so that's that's our profit target. That's what we're looking for, all right? Well, you gotta remember that we paid this debit of, uh, let's just call it $2.70. So we need to add that back into it, right? So then we got uh, $6.35. So when this is trading at $6.35, that's when we're looking to get out. All right. And if you set this up and it goes down there and hits that 165, you are most likely achieving uh, at least 25 percent. You're definitely going to be achieving that 25 percent and you are likely to be able to get that uh, as long as, you know, uh, there's not a lot of time left and stuff like that. It didn't happen overnight. Um, then you're most likely going to be able to get to this. All right. So this is where we would put our exit out. I'm not saying you get out at $3.65. I'm just saying that's the 50% of max profit. All right. And we got we paid this debit. So we've got to kind of figure out what our total price is to get out. And that's there. All right. Does that make sense for everybody on that? And our max loss, everybody's got this right now at this point, our max loss is gonna be that debit paid. That debit paid we were looking at was $2.69. That was our max loss for this example. But your max loss is the debit paid, you know that. Now this is where you have to do a little bit of brain work, all right? Our break evens, that at the money long put, that debit spread that we're looking at, that's the one where we have the skip strike. It's the long spread, that $10 minus the $269. Well, the one where we have the double, we have to split that for those two uh, short uh, spreads, right? So we have to split the difference on the debit, which is kind of nice. So let's go look at this again. So we can see this on, on here, we paid 269. I'm just gonna make it 270 to make it math easier for everybody. We don't have to deal with 50 cent pennies. So you can see the long one, we take this, uh, the um, 175 and subtract the debit because we bought this 175, we've got to subtract it because it's just a one lot. Uh, so 175 minus, the 270 that puts our break even at uh, 172.30, where it should be. Mark, I can't nail it, but 175.30 there. Now, if we split this in half, <clears throat> then we have uh, what is that? A dollar 35. 
So the dollar thirty five gets split um, from the one sixty, right? So we were saying we add the one sixty put we're long, take that one sixty strike and add in a dollar thirty five, and that puts us at um, uh, thirty five one one sixty one thirty five. All right. So these are our break evens. Those little red hash marks on that. All right. That first one, not, don't look at the purple line on there. That has, that adjusts with volatility and everything else that we're not gonna mess with today. Um, okay, so break evens. The one side takes the full boat of the debit, brings it down full boat. We're bearish, so we kind of want it to go down, but look at all that wiggle room we have on that side. And then um, to the downside, it gets split by the two. Uh, so you add the debit to the, to the buy put. Yes. Add, well, you're subtracting the debit from the one put you bought because we bought that one. We've got to take that debit out, but then we're splitting it on this one. The, because there's two strikes down here, <clears throat> the two long puts, it gets split. We got two spreads that's got that debit, it gets split by. Does that make sense? Because it's, it's, you know, weighted. So this debit gets split between the two, whereas this one takes the full boat. All right. All right, I'll throw out another example that I already, I usually tell you guys to throw some stuff out, but we're kind of getting close. I'm gonna do another one that is, um, uh, that I was looking at because I actually might put this one on tomorrow. I think that this 92, 93 area um, might get tested uh, with EA Sports. Yes, they did beat on earnings. I think that they're gonna kind of roll over. You can see that it, it likes to toggle back and forth between uh, this Fibonacci right here. So that's lining up nicely. Even though they had good earnings, it's not wanting to bust out of this area. Wall Street doesn't love EA Sports, even though all our kids do. <laughs> so uh, I was looking at the 95 strikes today, but that was when we were down in and around 95. So it, it made a move towards the end of the day. So let's just take a look at it from the 96. Um, do the 96. I'm going to go to the 93s, so uh, three of those, right? And then I'm gonna go out, since I did the 96, went $3, I'm gonna go $1.50, so the one and a halves, I'm gonna buy those twice. So let's get it down to a one lot. We can already kinda see one of the things we wanna make sure of now that we've got all that taken care of, right? I've got my days to expiration. It's a little bit short, but um, actually, I want my uh, I want my calculator. So the calculator, we want to take that uh, forty four cents. Oops, the forty four cents, and we're going to divide it by its width of the st skip strike, twenty five percent of the skip strike which is $3 and it's 14%, 14, 15%, all right? So that fits the rule. Now I'm telling you the 25% of this will generally speaking fit that rule. If it doesn't, um, you've probably done something wrong or just walk away, all right? Uh, I, I would probably look at the skip strike butterfly then or something like that um, if it wasn't fitting this rule because then you don't have any risk to the downside on that if you're bearish. But with this, if it goes down to that Fibonacci area and hits this, I mean, that's right there at that 93 strike, that's kind of where I want it to go. And you can see it even did it yesterday. Now, if it does it tomorrow, I might not get that 50% of my max profit. It's gonna maybe take a little bit longer than that. But if it, uh, you know, in the next two or three days does that, or you know, next week hits that, then I'm probably gonna achieve that 50%. If it does it tomorrow, I'm probably gonna be looking to get out at 
that 25% because once it hits that, that's really where I'm looking to get out. It does it once, uh, uh, I'm looking to pull the trigger on it, all right? So that's what I would do with this. Don't always try to go for the home run. You know, it's all about hitting singles, doubles, and triples. That's what wins, small ball wins the game, all right? That's what's kept me around forever. And, you know, um, that's why I came up with some of these rules is like, I'm not trying to nail any number. I mean, uh, I don't think anybody can pick it that far out. You know, if you're looking at 50 days out, especially to nail the number in 50 days, it just doesn't happen. And if you're trying to do that, you're gonna have a short life as trading. But if you just do it when it comes down there and hits your number or hits your spot, then listen, you've beaten the probabilities, you are way ahead of the game, right? Anybody else have any other questions? <clears throat> So you guys, we are in earnings season and I would not do this strategy for earnings, <laughs> but I do have all kinds of strategies that I talk about for $36. You know, if you set up something like, you know, I probably should have the, there's an article where this guy from Goldman Sachs was talking about buying calls, you know, five days ahead of earnings and um, making money on them. And that doesn't happen, you guys. You have to, uh, especially right now with the, earnings we're seeing people beat on earnings and the market's selling off you're going to get crushed in that kind of environment uh, but i talk about the ways to take advantage of high probability strategies and earnings and if you guys watch the daily market commentary you can see it i've been doing very well other than with my mcdonald's trades but i'm uh, or my mcdonald's earning trade but i am managing that risk the other thing with those daily market commentaries you guys i i don't cherry pick those trades i'm putting those trades on and like McDonald's goes against me, I'm showing you how we manage that risk and continue to try and turn the probabilities in our favor by adding different trades to it and playing around with those uh, trades to lower our basis on it, which is what we need to do on a daily uh, basis, right? It's not all about just talking about the winning trades. Those are easy. I can show you those kind of examples all day long. It's, you know, it also comes down to, well, what happens when it goes wrong? And all of that stuff is talked about in my data market commentaries and in these webinars, we go through that, how you manage that risk and how you take advantage of uh, situations that are given to you, all right? We don't always have the right directional assumption. Um, as a matter of fact, I've probably been directionally wrong in most of my picks for earnings, but, you know, I've been profitable on them. So, uh, you know, all in all, if you put them all together, I'm profitable for earnings season so far. So that's what we talk about for 36 bucks. Um, that's what you should take advantage of. I'm gonna throw this link over there in the chat window. Hopefully that is the right link. Yes, I've got it in there. I'm gonna send it out to you guys. Take advantage of that. Just click on that hot link. You guys should learn about this stuff. I teach it just kind of like what I've done with these other webinars go through the basics of it, maybe drill down on some of uh, the nuances a little bit more and how to take advantage of that. But uh, if you're watching this on tape delay, we're gonna have to punch this into your URL. I've got it right up there. Uh, you can do that as well. Just pause the video and type it in. Uh, one last thing is I wanna thank you guys all. I see a couple questions up. I'll, I'll try and hit those here in a second. Um, I'm gonna be drilling out on different option components, different option strategies, how and when I, where and why I trade those strategies. Also, uh, this is the link again, you can take advantage of that. Options course, earnings with option. Again, if you're watching this on tape delay, you're gonna have to pause it. If you're doing this live, take advantage of it. I'm telling you guys, the guys on TV talking about putting option strategies on around earnings are not necessarily telling you the right way to trade options, all right? Uh, uh, if you have any questions, Contact us at 310-598-6677 or email me at trading at protraderstrategies.com. All right, I'll flip it back to that page for you so you guys can take advantage of it. Like I said, 36 bucks or just click on the window over there to the side. It should pop up our um, website for you. All right, uh, let's see here. All right, can you clarify one question on the Christmas tree the long put gains in value 
uh, of the underlying as it drops, yes. What happens to the short legs? Won't they start gaining in value as the underlying drops? Yes, they will. And so will the other two long ones, right? <clears throat> so let's pull this up. So yes, this one's gonna gain as the market goes down and it's gonna gain by the delta too, remember? So this one's going to, the one we're long has the most delta involved in it. So as it goes deeper in the money, yes, it's going to gain in value and its deltas are gonna increase more with it, right? These short ones are going to gain in value as well, which are at the 93 strike. You know, they're gonna gain in value as well. You know, this one's gonna gain by 75, but by the time, you know, this one starts, uh, what were we doing at the 65? This one's gonna gain by 45 which offsets by 35 on these. And then the two that we got long on these, you know, are gonna gain in value from the, uh, the um, by a uh, little bit better than, or right around 35 as well. So the idea is though, once these go closer to at the money, you know, they're gonna offset a little bit, but it's, it's gonna be about that, uh, theta contraction on the ones that were short where we, we got the biggest bang for it and a product of the market moving in that direction. All of those levers and pulleys will be working in your favor. So you do want it to go down there. It does seem a little bit counterintuitive that we're gonna be short these strikes and we don't care if they gain in value, but uh, we don't really. The other ones are gonna be gaining in value as well. And as this gets further into the money, they're going to be, it's going to start, the, the, the tide will turn in your favor. All right. Can you show the last slide, which the max profit and the break even? Yes. Let's go back one for you. Let's see what we get underneath all my stuff. There you go. So the width and the long put spread, that's gonna be your uh, minus the debit paid, your max profit, the width of the long put spread. Remember, that's the one where we start out at the money. That's the uh, at the money one. And then we skip the strike with the skip strike. All right, so you bought the at the money and then you sold one, right? And then the other one was then you sold two and then um, and then bought two, right? So we bought one here, sell one put, then we sold two and then, and these are the same strikes. And then we bought the puts to define that, all right? but this is on the at the money skip strike one, the long put spread, minus the debit paid is your max profit. Debit paid is always the max, max loss on this. Um, and then your break even is that one at the money put. This is basically what we're looking at, that one long at the money put minus the debit paid. <clears throat> and then the two further, the furthest out of the money long puts, these here, and then you got to split that debit in half. All right. That's all I got for you guys. Hope you guys have a great weekend and great Halloween. And uh, if you can't take that, take it easy. <laughs>